Your people skills are really what make you a great engineer. You know, anybody can know how to work the gear, but you and how you treat people around you and how you deal with your clients is what kind of sets you apart from anyone else. I'm from Egypt. My father is a civil engineer and my mother is a chemist. Kind of growing around like extremely analytical family where science was hugely important, you know, you couldn't like BS your way around something. But I loved music so much and my father was kind of a, a hobbyist on keys, like he kind of picks up whatever he hears and he'll play the synth or like a mandolin and that really opened up my mind to like making music. I got hired at an advertising agency, found myself composing jingles for ads and working at an agency was the closest thing to like the art scene in a way. And my first day recording one of those jingles, I went to a studio in downtown Cairo and there was, it was like a really nice studio. And like a guy sitting behind the board and I was like, that guy, how do I become that guy? The great people around me and my love of music really eventually made me the engineer that I am. Audio was an escapism for me, to be honest. I sort of had this sort of most blind faith in, I have to make this happen or I'm gonna have to go back to recording jingles. So I kind of hung on as long as I could until I think maybe after 10 years, I started to like maybe make a little bit of money. What's really interesting about my story with Bjork is I didn't really even sign up to mix the record. I'm not a mixing engineer. And um, she kind of asked me right out the gate, like, do you mix? And I was like, no, I don't mix. And she's like, oh, okay. Well, can you work with stems? And I was like, yeah, I can work with stems. I, I do a lot of like stem mastering, which is sort of this gray in between area between mastering and mixing. So I went to her house and she played me the record. And at the back of my head, I thought, oh, that she just needs someone who's an engineer that's based here in Brooklyn to just kind of tie things in together. And then eventually someone is gonna mix it. A little did I know that was not the plan. <laughs> and then before I knew it, I was flying to Iceland and we were working on this record for a year. It's one of those like thrown into the fire kind of situations. And that was like the best engineering school I could have ever signed up for. Like, you gotta, you gotta be like down to experiment. You gotta work on a lot of bad mixes. When you work on a lot of bad mixes, when you get the good mix, you know what you need to do. Instead of mastering being this correction process, mastering will be like sort of the cherry on top, like the sweetening. Like how do you make things like even better and more lush and more beautiful?